All right, uh, this is being recorded. And one thing I say at the beginning of all these webinars is watch this again because it will make some of the nuances really stick. Uh, if you're not accustomed to trading options or this is new to you or uh, you may even be familiar with long put spreads. It seems pretty intuitive on uh, doing a long put spread, but I have some specific rules that go into this particular strategy in order to set yourself up for success. Generally speaking, this is a low probability strategy. So what I've done is I've tried to set this up in different ways over the course of years, trying to figure it out. And I think I've pretty much fine tuned it to where I've, I've rolled the probabilities at least more uh, in our favor. So keep, keep that in mind going forward. Uh, we're going to go over a lot of things here, but it, if it goes by you real quick, you know, just watch it again. It'll make it really sink in, especially if you do it right away. If you wait a month down the road, it's going to be like learning it all over again. But this uh, option workshop is going to be on long put spreads. And I can't find my cursor. All right, so let's get this going. I got to get a couple of things out of the way real quick, but my name's Eric Wilkinson. Some of you guys may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. I actually started trading in college with a psychology degree and decided to switch it over to finance. And then after graduating college, decided to move up to the Chicago Board of, or to Chicago to work at the Chicago Board of Trade. Started out as a runner and moved myself up into the pits. Um, basically uh, sold all my stocks that I had been investing in through college and uh, got myself a badge and uh, started trading in the pits. But in that time, I've traded everything from financials, stocks, uh, commodity futures, currencies, and options on all of these products in all market conditions. So uh, I've seen a lot of market movement and seen uh, a lot of volatility in those days. Uh, anyway, got to go over this disclaimer. This basically says any opinions, news, research, or analysis, or other information or material provided by pro trader strategies, associate companies, or employees is to be provided as general commentary it does not constitute investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, you guys, we're here to teach you guys how to swim. We want to educate you, make you guys so you can go out there and do this on your own. You know, uh, if somebody is out there like basically saying, follow my, you know, follow my trades or do this trade without knowing your risk parameters or what's in your portfolio, that's just counterintuitive to uh, really learning how to trade. So what we're trying to do here is to really teach you these different strategies so that you can implement it into your portfolios in your own way. Uh, and please remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, one other thing, you can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's blog, or you can follow Pro Trader Strategies at Pro Trader Strat. So uh, you get a lot of market insight through Pro Trader Strategies, and hopefully I can give you guys a lot of insight as well uh, and some daily snark and, you know, some other um, personal things that I'm doing on the sides too. So, all right. So uh, this strategy is great for low volatility environments. As you guys may well very or may very well know, we have been at historical low volatility for quite some time, and uh, doesn't seem to be really changing anytime soon. Uh, the market's kind of getting used to increasing in interest rates. We're not going to see those necessarily tantrums when the Fed starts raising rates. So, uh, in the meantime when there's not a whole lot of volatility in the market, we need to go to these debit type of strategies uh, to take advantage of directionality and the possibility of volatility expanding for us. So this is the long put spread, like I mentioned. This is how you build it out. So a lot of times people will say, you know, we buy, the, buy a close to at the money put and then just uh, selling a further out of the money put to kind of define, um, or actually it's kind of to really pay for some of that 
uh, strategy. But I like to buy the in the money puts. And the reason why I like to do that is because I I don't like to pay a lot for any strategy. And when you're buying just an out of the money put spread, for one, it's a very low probability strategy. Uh, you have to be really directionally right and it has to usually make a pretty big move uh, to the downside. The other side of that is there's a lot of extrinsic value in there. So that is data and that is time decay. And when you're buying just out of the money put spreads, those things can decay to zero. The way I set this up is I try to set it up to where there is no extrinsic value necessarily involved in this strategy. So we have intrinsic value and intrinsic value is what that option is actually worth without the theta. So it's kind of puts it parity to what the underlying is trading. And we'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a little bit. But uh, this has a definite bearish assumption. You know, you could almost say when we're building it out my way with the 84 delta strike uh, that's in the money, then, you know, you could be possibly somewhat neutral to bearish in this situation because you're not really going to get hurt if the market doesn't move at all or if it pins at the strike where you initiated or at the level that you initiated this because we've gotten rid of all of that theta decay in a sense. So um, the further uh, to the at the money, it's really kind of more bearish you are because you have to make up that difference to the downside. And a lot of times your break even will be even lower than where you initiate the strategy if you're using uh, out of the money put spread. So uh, with mine, the way I'm building it, the, I'm trying to make it where the break even is slightly above where we're currently trading. So it uh, gives us a little bit of wiggle room to the upside if the market doesn't necessarily tank right away. So I kind of mentioned this. One thing, we are always going to be paying a premium for this because it is a debit spread. It is a bearish debit spread. Um, and data decay, you are going to have to worry about it if you don't necessarily set it up the way I'm going to be talking about it. So we're going to try and negate this data decay that usually really uh, makes the long put spread not very valuable or, you know, or you have to make a big, huge move and be really right. Uh, and volatility, we want to do this in a low volatility environment because we want it to expand. And when volatility expands, then it inflates those premium values. And if we inflate those premium values, we could actually be not directionally correct and still make money. If it uh, just even sometimes rallies just a little bit and volatility starts expanding, uh, we can take advantage of that and uh, cut our losses in a sense. So picking the right strike, I, I mentioned this a couple of times already. We're going to be looking at uh, the 84 delta strike that is in the money to set this strategy up. And then we're going to be building it out to where the one, the put that we're selling is going to finance that extrinsic value. So that way we can set ourselves up for success right away. And we're going to be trying to pick strikes so that we get, we only pay, you know, at worst, 50% the width of that spread. So in a sense, if it's a $5 wide put spread, we're going to be paying around $2.50 for this or less if that possible. And with puts, sometimes it is possible to be able to achieve something like that because they uh, have inflated uh, volatility in there sometimes. Uh, then picking the right duration. Usually with strategies, we want or uh, strategies I talk about with selling premiums, we want it to be uh, pretty close to this area down here, 35, 45 days to expiration so we can take advantage of it. But you can see further out, we have less theta decay. Now we're gonna be trying to finance all of that theta decay, so we're not gonna really have to worry about the decay as much. But if you're doing it closer to uh, at the money or the put spread that is completely out of the money, you definitely want to get way outside uh, for one, so that the theta decay doesn't happen as fast. And two, 
even the way that I'm setting it up, it gives us a little bit longer duration in order to uh, be right. So that's pretty important. You know, we, the beauty in this strategy is because we're paying, financing that theta decay, it's not going to really hurt us so we can get further out and, uh, and allow that time to work itself out in our favor. Then picking the right environment, uh, we want less than a, an IV percent of 30, so uh, or a IV percent of 30 or less. So that way, um, if volatility goes down when we're doing it at like a 50 IV percent, then that's going to hurt us. That's going to really hurt our premium. So we want to start this out in a low IV environment. Also, when you're in a low IV environment or a really low IV environment, your probabilities are that it could quite possibly go a little bit higher. So uh, keep that in mind as well. So that's another reason why we're trying to get into a low IV environment because you know, our probabilities are that it will expand. Uh, if you're in a high IV environment, the probabilities are that it's going to contract. So uh, we want to avoid that type of situation. What is your max uh, hold time with a 55-day ex expiration? Well, I don't ever like to go um, with any option strategy inside of seven days to expiration. Um, sometimes with the butterflies, uh, the iron butterflies and things of that nature, those you kind of have to um, hold them a little bit longer because it, it takes a little bit longer for those strategies to really uh, work out. But with this one, uh, I, I don't really have a max necessarily time hold on this, uh, although I'd like to get out of it as quickly as possible, uh, having said that. Um, and I'll go over some of those rules here just in a second. Uh, about that. So I think I'll answer some of those questions here in a minute, David. Uh, picking the right underline. This goes with any options strategy, you guys. Pick the underlying that has a lot of open interest and volume. Don't I, I know you guys might know something about a particular underlying that nobody really trades that much, but keep in mind if they have a wide bid ask you have to give up a lot of edge to get in and a lot of edge to get out because there's just not very many players in those underlines. So in that rule of thumb for picking the right underlying, when you're looking at the option montage, we want that bid offer to be less than 10 cents for any underlying that is $100 or less. So if it's over $100, let's say it's a, you know, a $200 stock, I usually just say move your decimal point three ticks to the left and that's how wide that bid ask should be. So if it's a $200 stock, the bid ask and the option montage of the just out of the money or at the money strikes should be about 20 cents wide or less. Um, if there are other, there are some stocks out there that there's a lot of what we used to call players in the weeds uh, and it might seem a little bit wider, but they have a lot of volume and open interest. Well, in that case, then if you just sometimes better the offer by just a couple of pennies, uh, somebody's in there waiting the wings to come out and trade with you. So uh, that's a nuance there. But if you look at the volume and open interest, you will pretty much be able to pick up whether or not there are players in the weeds. If there's a lot of volume and open interest in that option montage, there could be people in the weeds. Play around with it, but don't give up too much edge and don't go past mid mid price and and or even just uh, lift the offer and hit the bid on any of these because to get out, you're going to have to do the same thing and that's going to hurt. I mean, you could be directionally right, but that edge you have to get up, give up to get in and then the edge to give up to get out could eat away at all your profits. All right, so uh, knowing when to exit the strategy before entering the trade with this one, rule of thumb for me is, and it's a pretty hard rule of thumb, uh, is if your 
short strike is breached, you cover it, right? If I am doing a strategy on an underlying that is trading 50, let's say, and I bought the 60 puts and I'm selling the 40 puts, as soon as that underlying goes down and hits 40 or trades 39, I'm looking to cover that no matter what credit I can get. Now, you know, the faster it happens, you're probably going to get a little bit less. But at the end of the day, you've beaten the probabilities because usually that strike that we are selling is like a 16 delta or something like that. So there is a very low probability of that underlying being below 40 at expiration even. Um, so make sure you keep that in mind. If you can beat the probabilities any time with options, take advantage of that. That's how you're going to be successful. And especially with a low probability strategy like this, where, uh, you know, it, it isn't likely that that short put will be, you know, close to at the money or in the money at expiration. So if you get that move, take advantage of it and cover it. Another way to look at it is if you choose that 84 delta in the money strike with like a 16 delta out of the money strike, we're going to be looking to take about 33 to 50% the debit we paid or um, uh, of our max profit potential in that. So in a sense, if it was, uh, a, say, a $10 wide strike and we paid $5, our max profit potential on that is $5, right? So we paid $5 we have the ability to make $5. So if I can buy it for $5 and sell, sell it for $7.50, that is a huge win. Otherwise, we'd be looking at it for 33% um, uh, of, uh, of $2. Anybody have that off their head? Uh, um, let me see. Uh, 30 three times 2.5 is probably somewhere around 80 some cents. Yeah. 80, 83 cents. So, um, Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So if you paid $2 and 50 cents, one thing you can do is if you pay $2 and 50 cents, one thing you can do is just multiply that times 1.33. And that gives you the $2 and 50 cents plus the 83 cents. So, <clears throat> um, I would be looking to get out of that strategy when I can sell it for, you know, $3.33. So that's right there between it. So $7 and, uh, oh, I did it on a, so a $5 one, sorry. five. So if it's $10 wide, and it looked to sell it for $7.50 or that $5 times the, uh, 33%, which gives you $6.65, so somewhere right in between there. And you usually will probably be getting right in between that if your short strike is breached right away. So uh, play it that way. Um, yeah, is this started? I get no sound, and screen says page 15. So it does say 15. Is anybody else having any uh difficulty hearing other than sometimes if you restart your computers after you lose sound. Um, it'll help. So, uh, and did you say to buy the 83 Delta long put? Isn't that very expensive with a lot of premium? Yes, it is a little bit more expensive, but keep this in mind that and I'll show you when, um, when we set this up. It is a little bit more expensive, you're right. And it's about, you know, if you're paying 50% the width of those strikes, so in a, uh, the case of a $10 wide, we're paying $5, do it smaller. So that's one thing that I always talk about, especially with debit spreads, low probability strategies. This is going to be one of your smaller strategies to put on um, and you know you can do a, a few more of them but 
it is a little bit more expensive to do that, but you know, what is your risk reward on this? If we have a higher probability of success versus the other one, yeah, you can pay, get a lot for the other one, but if you're rarely making money on it, then it, it doesn't behoove you, you know, to pay less and lose more often in a sense. Does that make sense for you? Does that make sense, you guys? Okay, good. Uh, and then uh, what else? Uh, working now. Okay, good. Uh, good at my end. Good. So it sounds like we have. Does that answer your uh, Shakar? Does that answer your question? How important is it to try and extract the maximum profit on the trade to keep the win loss ratios in order to be profitable in the long run? For example, if I lose 100% of the spread, in the losing trade, should we try to win 100 or 200 of the spread with the profitable in the long run? Good question, Luke. If, and that's why I'm saying if you can beat the probabilities on this strategy, you are, you're going to be winning more often than if you cover this one I'm talking about, you're going to be winning more often. Uh, this is a low probability trade, and it really kind of sets up for a 50-50 probability, but that's based on expiration in a sense. So if you can take these smaller wins, you know, if you can win it a couple of times here and there on smaller wins, you're, you're rotating the probabilities in your favor. So that's why we're trying to set it up the way uh, I'm talking about here. And one thing to keep in mind with any option strategies, you guys, is don't be a one trick pony because then uh, you're you're not going to win very often. So um, really mix it up. And I would say with any strategy, don't dedicate more than or allocate more than, you know, 10 to 20 percent of your portfolio into one, uh, you know, just one strategy or don't allocate more than like 10 to 20 percent in just one strategy. So keep it mixed up. If you're just using a long call spread, you know, 50, 80% of the time, you need to really start uh, looking at that and changing around some of your different strategies to increase your probabilities of su success. You don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. Uh, do you have to own the underlying stocks to do long put spreads? No, and this is uh, IRA appropriate. It is defined risk, especially because we're doing it as a debit spread in this case. Uh, it is defined risk, so you can do it in a uh, IRA. So you do not have to own the underlying. You could just be bearish in anything. As a matter of fact, I own very few stocks outright, and I trade all kinds of option strategies. Usually the only time I have a stock in my portfolio is when it's been put to me from like an earnings trade or something like that. If you watch my daily market commentaries, I go over all of that when I get stock put to me. Um, then uh, and how I trade around those. Uh, when do you do the butterfly? You know, uh, Shikar, that's a good question. And I actually have a couple of webinars on that. So uh, check that out. I don't really have a whole lot of time to go over that because we're uh, keep moving here. Uh, if you only get the directionality right, uh, otherwise expensive premium will end up expiring worthless. Well, if you don't get the directionality right. Yeah, any strategy for the most part, if you get are way off on your directionality, it's it's going to hurt. So um, this being the case, you know, if it stayed right where we are, that in the money strike is not actually going to expire worthless. It's going to expire for what its real value is. And the way I'm trying to set this up here in a minute is to only pay for what its real value is. And I'll, I'll be able to explain that a little bit more when we get into the uh, option montage. Let me go over the uh, profit and loss stuff. Max profit on this is going to be the long put, which is that 84 delta in a sense, minus the short put strike, minus the net premium we paid. And keep in mind, we're trying to do this so that uh, we are paying less than the width or 50% the width of those strikes. 
you know, if you're paying over 50% the width of the strikes, you're actually uh, decreasing your probabilities of success in that. So um, if the, the less you're paying for that strategy as a percentage of those widths increases your probability of success. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, max loss, anytime you're doing a debit spread, any kind of debit strategy is the net, net premium you paid. That's your max loss you can lose. Um, and that would be if this market rallied up past our long put. And then your break even is that long put minus the premium you paid. And what we're going to try and do is set this strategy up where our break even is actually above where the underlying is currently trading. So uh, by doing that, you know that you've paid for all of the extrinsic value, which is that theta decay. So without further ado, let's pull up this uh, option montage. Um, okay. Put up an example. Okay, yeah. Francis, I'm all over it. Here we go. Uh, in terms of losses, do you normally accept the max loss or do you cut your losses early? I usually, with a debit spread, let the probabilities play out. Look, you're going to have to, and everybody out there, you're going to have to look at your risk parameters and think about that also to cut your losses. Um, you could look at it like I'm only willing to lose 50% of that premium I paid. So in our example, if it was, uh, you know, a $10 wide, we're paying $5. Once it gets to $2.50, you can just say, hey, I'm pulling the ripcord on this. I'm out. Uh, I usually kind of let them play out, uh, let the probabilities play out. Because I look at it like that 84 uh, delta strike has a high probability of being in the money at expiration. So I'm going to kind of play that. I'm going to look for, uh, to play the probabilities that my underlying goes down and touches my short strike. So increase the probabilities that way. I also use a little bit of technical analysis and I like to use um, a couple of different times to put this on. Usually if it's had a big move, like a 10% move higher in a relatively short period of time, um, that's when I'm looking to put on this strategy in low implied volatility environments. Or uh, I'll show you with the market profile how I kind of play around with that as well. How do you scan for candidates? Great question. Uh, I usually just go like this. I don't even look at what the stock is. I go over here to the side and scroll it all the way down. This is the IV percent. You can just go into your gearbox and add that into your watch list. And then I just go like this. I, I usually go to the charts and kind of don't even look at what the underlying is and just start clicking on them and to try and find something that looks like it's had a big move up to the upside. Uh, this one, I probably wouldn't do it because it's, you know, it's just trading sideways. I don't think I'm going to get that move out of it and just kind of start clicking through them and find them until I get up to about a 30 IV percent and then I'm going to stop. If I haven't found something for this strategy uh, in that frame, I'm going to move on to something else. I'm going to start looking at high implied volatility. Actually, I always look for high implied volatility strategies first. But uh, as you can see, there's not very many choices here. So uh, it's a good time to add this in because look how many stocks we have that are below uh, 30 IV percent. I mean, we get all, you know, probably well over half uh, of the underlyings right now have lower than a 30 IV percent. Does that answer your question on that, Markle? Uh, from last week's long call spread, you said 10% uh, off the high. Do you mean the 52-week high? Yeah, yes, I usually mean the 52-week high or not even to create a 52-week high, uh, but, you know, a 10% move in a relatively short period of time. Like it could be this where uh, if, for instance, this had rallied, which it has, uh, you know, 10% to the high, that would be something, oh, as a matter of fact, this, 
I ended up on one that I uh, had vetted. So I was looking at this yesterday because it's made this big move, uh, gapped a little bit higher. So there's a lot of things going for it. It's actually had a 10% move from uh, the 92 to the 103 area. So that's over a 10% move right away, really quickly. So anytime you get that, there's a high probability that this is going to come back. Another thing with wind that has it going on um, is it pierced above the value area high. And anytime markets get way above this value area high, you can see how this starts getting thin. The market's going to have a tendency to want to come back, just like it did here. Got a little bit overdone to the upside, and there's going to be a correction. And that was even more than a 10% move. So that would have been like a, somewhere in here, I probably would have been looking to do that this type of strategy if it had low implied volatility and we're at really low implied at zero for the implied volatility it looks like so um, so anytime it goes up above the value area high comes back down and settles below here that's a pretty good indication that it's going to want to migrate back down to this point of control because that's where uh, it's happy places in a sense or that's where the most time and volume has been spent so that's where the most money is transacted. That's where the market finds value. So it's going to want to migrate back to that. So that's, this is one that I actually had looked at to vet. So uh, let's just kind of go and look through it. It has a lot of things to me that are, um, you know, a good opportunity to put on a bearish trade. So we can go into that option montage and look at, uh, somewhere outside of 49 days or 45 days is what I like to look at. It gives me more time to be right. Then I start looking at the 84, 85 delta. Now, this is what we were talking about. It does get a little expensive out here. So if you're not comfortable with that, start moving it in a little bit. But remember, you're going to have a tighter spread. So we need to pay for the extrinsic value of this. Uh, and one other thing. It's $100 stock. Look at these strikes that are just out of the money. Generally speaking, there's a lot of open interest and volume in here, but right out of the money, we can see that they're about 10 cents wide. Usually when it has pretty good markets and there's um, volume and open interest. We're getting a little bit further out. You know, you can see that if you go into these, there's a lot of volume and open interest, easily 10 cents wide here, which is more of a... Uh, that rule that I was talking about because the 45 days and inside is where most people play. We're getting out there a little bit further. So um, if it starts looking like, ah, you know what, these are too wide. It's more than Wolfman said, 10 cents wide on a hundred dollar stock. Well, further out in time you get, those spreads are going to get a little bit wider. So you can just double check yourself by checking the nearer to 45 days. And that should give you a good idea as to whether or not there's going to be players in there. Um, uh, David, ask me at the end, and I'll show you guys how to uh, talk about the monkey bars. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a um, trader uh, chat on Tuesday that you guys can sign up for. I'm going to talk about how to trade the market profile. Um, so you can uh, call us at Pro Trader Strategies or uh, send us an email, and we can set you up with that. All right, so uh, I'm looking for that 84 delta, and the one thing with that delta, like you guys were asking, it does get a little expensive sometime, and usually it's, um, you know, these are expensive because it's over $100 stock, but you can always just opt just inside of that to like, you know, the 80 delta or, you know, somewhere between the 75, 85, 84 delta is usually kind of where I go. So uh, if you didn't want to pay a whole lot for it, you know, because this is expensive, the idea is to pay for the extrinsic value of this. And uh, we're actually doing a little bit of uh, math here, right, to figure out what the extrinsic value is. Generally speaking, what you need to do is um, go into this, uh, you know, the 110 strike. So you take the 110 strike to figure out what the extrinsic value is. And subtract out this twelve dollars and seventy cents. Twelve dollars and seventy cents out of that. So ninety-seven thirty is where 
that value puts you. Now, if you subtract that from the uh, what the underlying is trading, which is 101, you know, 0.04. Oh, did I do something? Wrong? I did something there. Anyway, so it was a uh, 110. Yeah, 110 strike minus the $12.80, $12.80, so 97.20. So if we take the 101 minus the 97.20, that gives us about, let's just call it uh, $3.80. So $3.80 of extrinsic value in this uh, strike here. So $3.80 is what we have to pay for. So if we were going to do the 110 strike, we got to pay for $3.80. Closest thing we really have is this 92 and a half strike. So um, that would probably be the one I'd like to sell. Now, the next thing we have to look at is that 50% the width of the strike. So we know what our strikes width is 18. So uh, we take the uh, price we're paying, which is $9.00 uh, 13 cents and divide that by the $18 and 50 cents, $18 and 50 cents. I know you guys can figure this out in your head, but you know, just to go through the steps puts us just below that 50% the width of the strike. So that fits the parameters for this. Another trader hack, which, you know, I'll talk about a little bit more later is to just flip over here and it gives you a really good ballpark of what you've got to pay for. So the strike here that are in the money, these corresponding calls tells you what the extrinsic value of that option is. So that's a little trader hack. So, you know, it saves you time and effort and it really kind of dumbs that down, right? I mean, you don't have to go through and do the math on the calculator and subtract all that stuff out and, do the division, make sure you did it all right. You know, you saw me even mess it up on the calculator. So the easiest thing to do is just go straight across. I had to at least pay for $3 and maybe 65 cents by selling these right in there. That's pretty much taken care of it. So the other thing we can do is hit the confirm and send and check out where our break even is. It's just slightly off. Um, you know, we got to go down about 17 cents to get to my break even you know in a perfect world i'd like this break even to say like 101 30 uh and that would mean that i paid for all the extrinsic value obviously when we went through this uh we knew we had to pay or uh sell a strike that was at least three dollars and like 85 cents or something to pay for all of that extrinsic value but uh, that fits the book. So uh, we can go through this real quick. And if we sold these, get that extra money for it, um, we'd have to figure out $15 uh, isn't going to give us, we're paying more than 50%, so it won't work. But to give the example, that puts the break even well above us because I paid for all that extrinsic value and more, which brought that up uh, a little bit higher. Uh, you know what? I said eight, Trevor, I said $18 uh, with that. Uh, the width of the strikes is actually eight, uh, 18.50, right? Oh, sorry, 17.50. I was rounding it off and I rounded it backwards. So 17.50. So that doesn't give us that. Um, see, that's what happens when I start talking too much and not thinking it through. So Actually, so divided by, it's not going to give us the, uh, it's not going to give us that. So that's actually paying over. So if it's $17.50, we have to at least have uh, 18, it should be around $8.50. So that doesn't really work. We're paying too much for that. So in that, uh, we'd be paying over 50% of the width of the strikes. Um, I guess I did that in my head because I wanted it to work. Uh, so it, it doesn't work. So we're paying over 50% the width of the strikes. Thanks for calling me out on that, Trevor. So that would not work. Uh, to be clear, I mean, a 
you mean a 10% move up to the high and not a 10% from the record high, correct. Uh, I just mean a 10% move in like a short period of time. Now, what's a short period of time? That's kind of vague, but I usually kind of look at within like a week or so. If it's 10% move over the course of like three or four months, then that doesn't uh, necessarily mean a whole lot to me. But if it's made a big move rather quickly, then I'm looking for, you know, because anytime an underlying makes a big move, people immediately are starting to think, oh, I got to cover this. I get, you know, and you're going to look for some kind of pullback. Should the put be under the stock? Uh, the put, the put we're buying should be above where the underlying is trading. So in this example, we were looking at the 10, 15 ones. Um, if we did it with the, we could check with the 85 Delta. So let's just do this rather than doing all the math on this to figure out where the, extrinsic value is we'll just go over here look at the uh, we got to collect at least a dollar so we can do the 80s so now we're looking at a $45 wide uh, under uh, $45 wide strike we would need this to be around uh, 42.50 right so um, $42.50 that doesn't work either so we can move on to another one this is usually where I throw it out to you guys we can go through uh, actually I'm kind of running out of time with this so I'll just go through some of the ones that I betted I usually throw it out to you guys that look at some of your stocks but I don't know that we're gonna really have enough time uh, are you getting filled at that midpoints are you getting filled at the midpoints not always but I'm not going to go past my like if if the underline says um, you know the midpoint on this and I have a pretty tight bid ask on the montage, you know, so I know that the mid price is probably pretty close. Anytime I'm entering a strategy, if I'm buying it, I'm going below that mid price and doing it at a point where I don't necessarily think I'm going to get filled because I can, all, it doesn't cost me anything to cancel and replace that, but I'm not going to go past paying 50% the width of the strikes just not going to do it uh, so making sure I do that cancel replace it doesn't cost me anything if I put it in an order and I immediately get filled it probably cost me a couple pennies so if you guys aren't canceling replacing orders all the time if you don't have like a couple cancel replaces for every order you're giving up money and <clears throat> it doesn't seem like you're giving up a lot right now but if you do that over the course of your career or over the course of the next 10 years, those pennies add up to a lot. <clears throat> okay, so um, keep that in mind. So uh, Ben's asking, why not buy the 105 and the 95s? <clears throat> you could, but it, if you look at this, you know, really you would have to buy the the 105s, and uh, if I did the 95s, if we look, we know we're not getting our extrinsic value paid for with the 95s, and our break even is going to be a lot lower than we're currently trading. So to pay for the extrinsic value, we're going to probably have to do the 97 and a half. So in that case, we're looking at uh, $7 and 50 cents wide, which um, uh, what's the um, breakdown on that so if we have the seven dollar and fifty cent wide strategy <clears throat> excuse me got a tickle in my throat um, and then we divide that by the seven dollars and fifty cent wide Let's see what we got 52 you know I mean that's pretty close but um, you know to I, I like to look at it where I'm going to be able to get a lot more for that uh, strategy on you know because I'm only going to be able to make you know uh, three dollars and forty cents or three dollars and ten cents on it oh no sorry three dollars and uh, sixty cents for it three dollars and sixty cents for it and if I look at my math on that you know I'm probably going to be making about a dollar uh, seventy or so dollar sixty five 
total. So uh, it's a low probability strategy. So I, I usually like to go a little bit wider and get that that move to happen because sometimes you can get even uh, 30% of the width of that strike, uh, of the max profit potential, I should say, before it even gets breached on this lower strike. So um, I just think that it has a higher, or I've found that it has a higher probability of success that way. I can understand that you're thinking, yeah, it's going to get breached, but it's probably just not, they're too close in proximity to really gain in value. So as you know, these get deeper in the money, if you're directionally right, they're going to gain in value faster than what these ones that are slightly out of the money are going to gain in value also. So that's another thing having to do with the Delta. You know, if you do the 105s, this is every uh, down tick by a dollar, this is going to gain in value by 56 cents, but this is also going to gain in value, value by 39 cents. So you're just not getting a lot of increase in value for every dollar move. Does that make sense? Because these deltas are offsetting each other. That's why I like to go a little bit wider also. So the delta I'm long uh, increases in value faster than the delta that I'm short. Does that answer your question, Ben? Okay. Uh, and somebody else asked, uh, oh, why is it important to uh, pay for the, uh, well, I was saying it's important to pay for all of the extrinsic value. And if you start buying into the intrinsic value, which is what that underlying is worth, that makes our break even above where the underlying is trading. So if I pay for more than what I'm saying, the extrinsic value of the option is, if I'm paying for more, like in this case, when I was, uh, let's just look at the 115s. If I can pay more than $2.30 and I sell these 90s, then that puts the break even if this math were to work out, uh, you know, if this math were to work out with being 50%, but you can see that when I pull up the confirmation, the uh, break even should be above. So um, the other thing, anytime this little trick doesn't work out like it didn't there, that means these stock that these are pricing in a dividend that we got to kind of finance for also. So usually this should be the extrinsic value. If it's off by anything, then that's where the dividend's laying. That's where the, that's the, what the market's pricing in a dividend. So let's find a couple that'll work out real quick. So uh, did I answer everybody's questions? Do you expect the stock to go up or down? With this strategy, I really want this stock to go down. Uh, why was I picking the 105 days to expiration? Oh, okay. Um, because they don't have that 75 strike for win, or the 75, uh, which is the May. I think the May is the sem right around 75. So um, that's, I want to go outside of 49 days, give myself the opportunity to be right. Um, uh, we can look at Nike. I, did, I didn't, um, let's just look. Where's Nike Ben? So Nike, oh yeah, Nike, I like that. See how, what we were talking about, it came up outside that value area. We had a big move down. Um, so now it's settled back down inside the value area. You could easily see it want to go back down to uh, this 52 st strike. So uh, it's got higher than a 30, uh, it's got a 34 IV percent. And it's could expand more if we got the, uh, looks like dividends could be falling in that time frame. So you could expect it to go up. I usually shy away from it. That's why it didn't come up on my radar is because it's above, it's got a higher IV percent than what I was looking for. Uh, does the expiration date has to be the same for the long and short puts? For this strategy, yes. Otherwise you're getting into other things that are like the, um, you know, like, uh, poor man's covered put and stuff like that, which I've done webinars on also. This is a bear put spread, correct? Uh, so we can look at this just because you pulled it up, but so we'd want to at least pay for 39% or 39 cents, which is the ballpark of the extrinsic value. I know it's got to be more than that. So we're going to have to uh, try and sell this one. So hold on shift and put it down. Um, $15 wide, so 
uh, we want this to be about seven dollars and fifty cents. So uh, we'll, we'll move on. So here I'll go through a couple real quick that I had found. Um, so Texas Instruments. So Texas Instruments doesn't have that one either. So let's just look at the July. <clears throat> Um, and you'll also find that the way that it's decayed out, these strategies are going to be pretty similar in what you're looking at for all of these. So um, it's the eight, they don't have the 84 delta, so I'm going to default to the 80. I usually default to a lower delta because, again, you know, we don't want to have to pay a lot for this, right? Uh, how wide do you place your trades? Uh, I start with looking at this 80 delta or 84 delta and the default down. That's the one I'm going to buy. I know that right away. And then the next thing, my next step is to look what is the extrinsic value of that $8.60 and it's somewhere right around $1.13. So then I'm going to go down here and where can I at least collect $1.13? You're going to default to what, you know, more you want to sell more than what that extrinsic value is to kind of put it into perspective. We've got a $15 wide underlying. We've got Texas Instruments trading at under $100. It's inside of even out 140 days inside of that 10 cents parameter. So that makes that work. We got the implied volatility percent really low, well below 30. So we're good there. Now we're collecting seven dollars, or we're paying seven dollars and seventeen cents, which our max we would be willing to pay for this strategy is seven dollars and fifty cents, right? So we're doing better there. The next thing we do, go to confirmation. Uh, it's seventy-seven eighty-three. No, we didn't achieve getting above our break-even above us but it's only by three cents, right? So at the end of the day, we built this strategy. So we have increased our probabilities of success because we're paying less than 50% the width of the strike. We've increased our probabilities of success by uh, time because we've, we're doing this with a lot of time. We have a lot of time to be right. And if this underline goes down and clips these 70s, that's when I'm covering this strategy. As soon as we breach that 70 strike, uh, I'm going to look to get out of it. So uh, in that, knowing my exit strategy, if it comes down, hits those 70s, I'm going to get out. Or if I can collect, I'm buying this for $7.17, so I'm paying $7.17. At least I want to be able to sell this for at least... 33% increase in value. So multiply that times 1.33. So when it's trading $9.54, that's when I'm going to look to cover this. And if I get that to happen, to come down and trade 70, that's probably right around where you're going to be able to get out. Uh, you want to see it on the Analyze tab? Sure. So hold on a second. Let's just go to the analyze. <clears throat> Let's analyze the trade. So this is what it looks like. So, <clears throat> you know, if we get that one standard deviation move, then, you know, in either direction, basically, is going to be our win or loss. So, uh, but we have a lot of wiggle room. But we definitely want this strategy to go down to get to our max profit. Uh, and we're going to be covering it well before that. So uh, let me make that up on a uh, one lot so that you can easily see it. So, uh, you know, you can see <clears throat> our max profit potential is uh, going to be that $7.83, which is why it's very close to that 800 And then $7.13, $7.17 is where our max loss is. So we're risking less to make more, which is always good anytime you can do that. Uh, why not just buy out one half? You may uh, <clears throat> get out of the long put. 
if you mean by getting out of that, or sorry, getting out of that short put, if you're getting directionally right, usually you're losing money on that. And then you're also increasing, <coughs> excuse me, if you get out of that one, that's the one that financed this trade. So if you get out of that, you're actually increasing or decreasing your probabilities of success because you paid more. And when you're getting out of it, that brings your break even down much further. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of questions coming up. How wide do you place the trades? I answered that. Um, how far out in time? You know, I usually like to shoot for the 70, but, you know, you can go further out uh, than that. Uh, a lot of times you're going to find that it is going to be very close. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I have time for one more example that I think I can find multiple um, ones on it. So uh, let's look. I think Cisco was, has all of them. <clears throat> Might be. Uh, so, yeah, Cisco has those. So we can kind of look at Cisco, looking at the 84 Delta. I don't really want to go all the way down to... Um, do I want to go down there? I think I'd rather go up slightly for this one, uh, just so I can pay, get it wider and, you know, pay less extrinsic value. So we're going to buy the 37 strike here. Where, where can I at least pay for 17 cents? Um, it's probably those 30s, but uh, I always default a little bit higher. So we've got $6 wide paying less than $3, so that's good. So I'm paying less than 50% the width. Um, so we're paying $2.86. So we could almost go out here and look at uh, the further duration ones. And it's going to be the 37s again because that's close to the 84. So you can see that uh, we've got to at least get 30-some cents. So that's going to be these. <clears throat> and see, it. <clears throat> excuse me, it ends up being the same so it doesn't hurt you to go you're not paying more by going out and buying the same strikes why because we financed all of the theta decay we financed all the theta which is that extrinsic value so it should be the same if you've paid for all that theta or at least very close so why not if you're paying the same thing why not give yourself that time does that make sense for everybody? That's why I'm going further out. So, you know, you can go as far out as you want a lot of times, or at least, you know, somewhere between 75 and 140 days. Um, but uh, if it makes that move right away, you're going to make your money faster with these closer ones, generally speaking. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? So that's how I set it up. Start with the 84 Delta, play around with the strikes, make sure you're paying less than 50% the width of those strikes. The trader hack is to save yourself a lot of time and headache and error by just looking straight over here, figuring that out, and then knowing how much you have to pay or get paid, I should say, to finance that extrinsic value. Does anybody else have any other? Thank you, Luke. I appreciate the kind words. So in that, uh, that's it for this. You know, relatively easy to set up. Just make sure that you're setting yourself up for success with that. Hey, you know, like if you guys learned anything at all from this uh, or appreciate the way that I teach, we're doing this little offer. It's great value. Floor trader hacks, kind of like those that hack I just shared with you on figuring out the extrinsic value of an option that's in the money. I mean, those that all these hacks are the things that we used to use on the floor, you guys. I mean, it will save you time and headache and error because they're just little nuances what what that option montage is giving you. I mean, there's so many things that are right there in front of your face that most people don't even know, but floor traders knew about it, like what the extrinsic value of an option is and how to figure that out really quickly. All of those things will save you time and, uh, you know, the possibility of making a calculation error. So um, if you want to trade like a floor trader or a professional trader, these hacks uh, or how we did it on the floor and aren't taught really anywhere else. So, 
you know, here's your chance to trade like a real floor trader in a sense. Uh, also, you know, there's nine videos on these. I'm, I talk about probabilities of being in the money. I'm talking about probabilities of being touched, uh, you know, where, how to figure all of those little nuances out. Um, they're shortcuts that'll save you a lot of time and money. And uh, these courses are all designed to produce consistent winners using any of these techniques for that matter. And this course can pay for itself over the, uh, you know, over the course of, just a few trades for this low price, especially at 50% off. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, it's not mentioned here, you're gonna get uh, six months of my premium subscription, uh, which comes with like daily market commentaries, access to me. The daily market commentaries, you guys, are hugely uh, valuable, I think, or I hope they are for you guys, for sure, uh, because I spend a lot of time setting them up and getting ready for them. But not only that, I talk about every single trade I'm doing, how to manage those trades. So uh, even if you haven't realized how, how do you defend an iron condor, you know, I might be talking about that tomorrow in the daily market commentary. So uh, watch those because, you know, for one, they're real world examples. And, you know, I talk about when I get trades put to me. I talk about when I'm taking a loss and how I'm taking a loss. I'm talking about every single trade I'm doing and the good, the bad, and the ugly. So not a lot of people out there do it all day, especially on Twitter. It seems like everybody only wins on Twitter, which is kind of funny. Twitter, Twitter traders only talk about winners. Floor traders only talk about losers. And the reason why floor traders only talk about losers is because that's the ones we're always thinking about. So, uh, and trying to defend and turn around into winners, which I do talk about how to turn those losers into winners. So, uh, and in that, increasing your probabilities of success. And if I can do that, you know, for 500 bucks, that's well worth it, you guys. So take advantage of this. Uh, and, and if you have any issues and you bought this, you know, you can reach out to me, write me an email. Hey, Wolfman, I've got this problem. Uh, you know, this strategy is killing me. How do I defend it? What do I do? How can I, how can I increase my probabilities of success? And I'll do that. So. Uh, take advantage of that. Okay. That's about all I got for you guys. You can click on the chat window to get this. It is the floor traders hacks. This is also the uh, link for that, or that you can act. It's not really a link. I shouldn't say, but this is the URL designation for that trade. So, uh, or for that deal. Um, so you can pause this and write that down real quick. And later webinars, I'm going to be drilling down on different option components and how I trade uh, options, trades I find, when and where I find them appropriate. You can also call us at 310-598-6677 or email us at trading at protraderstrategies.com. Also, you know, if you guys got any ideas of uh, future webinars you want us to uh, do a video on, uh, please reach out to us and give us some ideas. We'd love to uh, to dig down into that for you guys, all right? So go to the chat window, click on that. I mean, six months of the premium membership, you guys, is, it's gonna save you basically, you're getting that basically for 50% off and you're getting the floor trader hacks for free in a sense. So um, that's definitely a good deal. Getting the premium membership 50% off for six months and uh, that, Floor Trader Hack, all those Floor Trader Hack videos for free. So think of it that way if you want. And uh, six months of all of that stuff. So, um, all right, so that's all I got for you guys. Risk reversal, future ideas. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I'll, I'll, I actually have notes on that, so uh, I probably should do something like that. Good idea. Another great session, my good friend. Have a good weekend. Looking forward to Tuesday's sessions. All right, thank you. Yeah, Shady Treat, go do that because I'm going to be talking about how to uh, set up and trade market profile because that's something I look at quite often, and especially if you guys like trading intraday with futures. That when we were futures, when I was trading futures a lot, like on a daily basis, that's basically how we entered and exited our trades all day long. So. Uh, 
um, check that out. <clears throat> and you can write us at Pro Trader Strategy or trading at Pro Trader Strategies to uh, to get that. It's usually really good. There's you know like six or seven guys talking about different things. So uh, and a couple of them are floor traders too. So how do you sign up for that Tuesday? Uh, email us and uh, they'll they'll give you a link for that, David. All right, and. Uh, that's about it. If you can't take that, take it easy. Uh, Chris, the premium uh, service is it's embedded in here. They don't have it written down there as a bullet point, but you get if you buy this here, click on the chat window. And uh, it gives you, you get six months of uh, the service for, for all of this. It's in there. There you go. I think they, uh, David, I think they took care of you. And Chris, yeah, just hit, hit on that chat window and you, <clears throat> somebody will get back to you. Sorry, can't get rid of my tickle. 